A few years back, I was just hanging out at home, chilling, enjoying a quiet afternoon when the phone rang and uh, Otillo gave me a call. Been a little while since we kind of kicked it, so we caught, caught up on a few things. And soon into the conversation, Otillo was asking me a few questions regarding recording and mixing. Now, he was working on some stuff at home, some tunes, and he just had some technical questions for me. So, anyone who knows me, I get excited, you know, and I, I really dive in with what I know, trying to answer some questions. As we were talking, Otil kind of stopped me and he said, man, you know, why don't you just mix this stuff for me? Because I don't really know what I'm, I'm doing in terms of this, this end of, uh, the, you know, recording and mixing or whatever. So I say, yeah, cool, man. Just shoot me the files and I'll, let me, I'll see what's up. So he did get the files, uh, load them up into my, into my computer. And I, what I heard was just, was beautiful. All it was, was piano, bass, and vocal. And, oh, it was just beautiful. Beautiful arrangements, recordings and arrangements of a Grateful Dead song. I mixed it, did my thing. Shot it to Oteal. He listened, loved it. He said, "Man, I have a few. I have, I have some more tunes. Why don't you mix these and produce them? And maybe if you get a chance, maybe you could play some drums on some of the tunes at your studio." Okay, cool. Sends me maybe one other tune. Mixed it. Uh, no drums. It was just bass, piano. And Otillo's vocal, got it back to him, loved it. And he started telling me about this album that he, he was planning on doing. Okay, cool. At that point, we kind of went radio silent because Otillo was going out with Dead and Company for like a summer tour. And while he was out, I didn't really bug him, you know, or, you know, I'd shoot him a text here and there, but I know how it is when you're out on the road and just dealing and, you know, playing music and traveling, you're just kind of in focus mode. Cool. I went on about my life, but I had this feeling from that first conversation with Oteal. I've mentioned before the like uh, like little voices I hear in terms of like guiding me on certain paths. It wasn't anything like that, but it was just this feeling like something bigger is going to come from this little mix I was doing for him. Anyway, fast forward a little bit. I get a call from Oteal's manager, Ben, and say, you know, Oteal's, um, we're gonna go into the studio to record, you know, his album, and Oteal really wants you to record it and produce it, whatever. And I was kind of thinking about myself, well, yeah, I, already, I know this, but that's cool, he's reaching out. But there was a little addition, <laughs> I guess, to, to the whole situation. He said, well, we're going to go over to Iceland to record the album. And immediately I was like, okay, so this is turning into something else. It's not just Oteal recording some tracks at home that I'm going to mix and maybe add some drums to. He, you know, so then we, we start figuring it all out. All right, we're going to Iceland. And he tells me all the, the, the band that's going to be coming over, you know, from Oteal and friends. And it's turning into a thing. We get to Iceland. It's just a magical place. Beautiful setting. We're 50 kilometers from the Arctic Circle. It's just the 
ocean, the mountains, the snow. We were there in December, so it was maybe about four, four and a half hours of daylight, but it was just incredible. We're in the studio. The plan was to record all the basics for the first, you know, few days. And then the last couple of days, Otil was going to record all his vocals. So we were moving and grooving on this. Now, let me say this. When Otil asked me to come record, mix, and produce this album, I immediately, immediately said, yes, because it's Otil, it's my brother, right? But I was very mm, I once I'm not gonna say apprehensive. I don't know if I have the right word for it, but knowing that this album was a album of Jerry Garcia and Robert Hunter ballads made me <laughs> I was wondering why I was the one asked to produce this. O'Teal knows I wasn't a huge dead fan. I know I wasn't. <laughs> but it was that feeling. You have to go do this. Go do it. Don't worry about anything. Don't think twice about it. Don't overthink it. Just go. So we're in Iceland. Recordings. Everything's sounding great. Everything's moving and grooving. Like I said... We get to the song Standing on the Moon. We had O'Teal's vocals from what he cut at home from his demos. And the band was playing to his lead vocal and his background vocals. Kind of like we had been doing from the other tunes. So we we had a, a good little workflow. Everything was 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 happening. I'm at the console and all right, here we go. Hit record. And they start playing. And all of a sudden, the it was like I could the vibrations of the the music coming out of the speakers and like over the console and up my fingers and my arms. It just saturated my entire body, my entire being this incredible energy and they were probably about more than halfway through the tune and I just I got hit with such a such emotion I literally just like started crying I could not stop crying (laughs) it was incredible the guys get to the end of the tune and I knew I gave him a moment, a little silence, but I knew that was the take. It was a wrap. I walk into the studio, I said, guys, this is it. That that was the one. Let's take a break and let's chill. O'Teal and I go into the lounge, just he and I, and we just had a, a, a pretty heavy moment in there. It was very, like I said, very emotional very reflective um but uh also a time where we could see ahead of what was happening session went on everything came out great kim and i fly back to boston from iceland land in boston all right Let's go out and have some some dinner. So we go to this restaurant and the whole experience of the album and being there with 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 everyone and um, really started to sink in. And at the same time, it was like that the light a light bulb went off or that there's a, that a feeling again, but a very strong feeling. And out of my mouth, I just say to Kim, yeah, it's time for me to close the recording studio. It's time for me to close Iron Wax. 
this is what I want to do. Now, I didn't immediately close the recording studio, but a seed had been planted from that first conversation with Otio. And then it started to blossom when we were in the studio. And by the time we got back to Boston, it was like the universe was, again, pointing me in this direction, this new direction. It was time to start a new chapter in my life. I eventually closed the recording studio a few months later. And before I closed the recording studio, I had one last session um, for a Alan Evans Trio um, recording date. I'm sitting around before that session. I'm thinking, huh, I, again, being kind of reflective on all the, the great times I had in that recording studio. I was thinking, what was the first session? Or when was the first session, I should say? I know what the first session was. The first session was with me, Neil, Kofi, and Oteal. So I looked in the calendar, and I just, man, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The very first session I had at Iron Wax with, with those cats and my very last session at Iron Wax were exactly, exactly seven years apart to the day. The first person I called, of course, was Oteal. He had to, he just had to know this. Hit him up, Oteal, man, check this out, dude. And I told him the situation, he bugged out. He couldn't believe it either. We just had, we were just, we were bugging. Anyway, Iron Wax closes and a new chapter begins in my life. And a lot of that has to do with O'Teal giving me a phone call that day asking me to Eventually, I guess, <laughs> asked me to mix and produce some stuff for him. So, where does this all go? Where is it? Where am I going with all this? Well, where I'm going with this is wherever the universe has brought me, right here, this moment in time. So, I have learned over time, as you can see in these um, videos I've presented, to accept and surrender to these opportunities, these experiences that are laid out in front of me makes me think, especially in this situation, sometimes you have to accept the fact that people can see strengths and talents and and all these qualities in you that you may not see in yourself and this i feel this is a perfect example with oteal tapping me to produce this album for him a new chapter opened in my life and I ran through that door and I'm enjoying every second of it. So here we are. I don't know what's next, but I have a pretty good feeling 
That's going to be fun. Thanks, Otio. Appreciate it, bro. Much love, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode, whatever that may be.